let's take a look at Zim Shipping. They had a uh, earnings released in late November, and we also wanted to discuss the supply chain issue. Since its IPO in mid-2020, Zim has increasingly surpassed earnings expectations, including this past quarter. Here are some of the highlights from the last earnings call. For all of 2020, the company's revenues were about $4, million, 4 billion in total. But in just the last quarter, the company recorded $3.1 billion in revenues. Quarterly EBITDA were $2.1 billion. This compares to full year 2020 EBITDA of around $1.03 billion. So it's a huge increase. Note the 66% EBITDA margin. Uh, I don't care what industry you're in. That's a huge EBITDA margin and a great accomplishment. Then if you look at net profits, uh, they were $1.5 billion for the quarter, which were about triple the profits for full year 2020. This graph highlights the company's spectacular earnings growth over the last 10 quarters. And then that line going heading downwards reflects the company's leverage ratio. The company's really focused on boosting returns, and these numbers really reflect that. Return on assets of over 64%. Return on equity of over 200%. That's really important because return on equity is historically correlated with long-term stock returns. And look at the profit margin as well and operating margin. So we've got these high historical returns and they're not being reflected in the company's stock price, as you can see here. Keeping that very high growth in mind, the company's trading multiples, two times earnings, three times forward earnings, 0.7 times sales, are extremely low. A big part of this is that the industry as a whole commands low multiples right now. This table from Finviz contains all marine shippers with market caps over 300 million, and that's Zim on the bottom. When looking at price to earnings ratios and price to sales ratio, earnings growth and profit margins are particularly important. But despite Zim's relatively strong performance in terms of earnings uh, growth and margins, the market is pricing Zim lower than its lesser performing peers. Zim's price to sales ratio is the lowest of all reported. The one exception is that the market is pricing Zim higher than peers in terms of multiples of book value, which is likely because of the company's very high return on equity and dividend payout ratio. Investors are looking at things like profitability and returns, asset turnover, and leverage when pricing a company. The entire industry is benefiting from very high freighter rates, but recall that Zim is managed a little bit differently. They, they don't own all their ships, they do more leasing, and they focus on markets with higher returns. Zim is also technologically very savvy, and they're using data and AI to dig out uh, more profitable routes. Let's run through a quick value estimate. The top half of this table shows the company's current market value of invested capital ratio to latest 12 months EBITDA. So right now the company's trading at a minuscule valuation ratio of 1.3 times EBITDA. From the earnings call, company forecast full year EBITDA of between 6.2 and 6.4 billion. We'll use 6.2 billion to be conservative. So you can see in the bottom half of this table, we've applied that 1.3 multiple to 6.2 billion, arriving at an invested capital value of about 8 billion, from which we subtract interest bearing debt to arrive at the market value of equity. And then we divide by the diluted number of shares outstanding to arrive at a value per share of about $68. So that's significantly higher than the trading price of about $52 per share. So even if multiples don't change, the company is worth $68 a share. But in reality, the company is growing at an extremely fast clip, and that 1.3 multiple seems extremely low. But I'm going to touch on this uh, as we get into the industry section coming up. So the industry, and Zim in particular, are doing really well. But the concern is, will the supply chain issues ruin the party? And the answer seems to be no. Uh, there's an, a guy uh, named Jim, Jay Mintzmeyer that does really good industry coverage. 
and he explained that what happened with the pandemic was that initially there were concerns about would people continue spending and, and how high would demand uh, be or would it decrease even. And what happened was that many of the large shippers forecast decreased demand. And so what they did was they decided this was a good time to scrap their smaller ships. Um, and scrapping is a big part of the shipping industry. Uh, there's a big recycling industry based in South Asia. And so they decided to put in orders for larger ships because the only way to increase profitability in the industry is to buy larger ships. And they thought this the pandemic would create a low and therefore an opportunity to do this. But in fact, demand only increased because people were stuck in their homes and people wanted to buy more. And many of the shippers were left uh, with less supply. And so the industry as a whole, there was this imbalance created where you've got this great demand and low supply. And that's leading to much higher freight costs, which is benefiting the industry now. Another factor is slow steaming. Recently, the industry discovered that by slow steaming, or simply driving the ships slower, they save significant fuel costs, which of course boosts profitability. They also reduce emissions. So now slow steaming is being regulated, for example, by the EU. And this is contributing to further delays at already congested ports. And, but it also contributes to the profitability of the industry and the, the imbalance between demand and supply, which further helps the industry. So as the industry benefits, I believe that Zim will benefit to a greater degree. Again, they're a smaller company and they are not bound by less profitable historical contracts. But instead, what they're doing now is as freight prices are historically very high, now they're entering into longer term contracts and which are more profitable. So Zim is a strong competitor and it's really well managed. But with Zim, you're also benefiting from the small company effect. Uh, a $1 billion increase in sales just means a lot more to a company Zim size than a huge shipping company like Maersk. And the company seems undervalued, both with respect to its comps and also with respect to its own forecast.